welcome to this little comparison video. In this video we're going to look and a side-by-side -side comparison of the Gent 2500 Warbler and the Chloride Gent Warbler. And we'll have some very sort of up-close comparisons and of course tests all the different sounds that they make. Now from the front these are very similar and there are already several videos on eBay demonstrating the sort of sounds these can make. However, I've not found one yet of an actual side-by-side -side comparison, so that's what I'm aiming for here. So, yeah, from the front they are very similar. However, if we turn them around is where we start to see the differences. So first of all, the Gent 2500 Wobbler. And then the Chloride Gent Wobbler. Now straight away, you can see there's a lot more to the Chloride Gent version than there is to the 2500 version. As we look a little closer at the 2500 version we can see we have a few simple options on the inside. We have a 24 volt input positive and negative and we also have a 50 volt input. Worth noting that these are both DC. The three options as you have seen on previous videos of mine as well here S Y and I are the different sounds that it can be made that it can make and the grey flying lead here can be connected to any of these three to make the different sounds. What we established in the previous video is that the sort of bullhorn that we have here uh, is just a standard um, speaker which obviously then reflects the sound to make it extremely uh, loud and intrusive um, hence in the previous one of my previous videos this one actually managed to play radio too so the purpose of the printed circuit board in both of these is just to create different oscillating um, outputs which you can then change with the different options on here if we move over to the chloride gent wobbler <laughs> As you can see, there are a lot more, there's a lot more to it. Um, it makes three different sounds, the same as the 2500 version. However, the options that we have are a little more advanced. A look at the instruction manual that came with the Chloride Gent Warbler shows that you can have 12 and 24 volts DC. It's worth noting that the 2500 will run off less than 24 volts as well. Um, I'm going to use a 9 volt battery to produce a sound on both of these. The chloride jump wobbler will also run off 50 volts. And we have the wiring configurations for the different sounds here. Um, for 12, 24 and 50 volts. Interesting that we also have an option to switch over between different sounds. Depending on how we connect the leads up inside. And then we also have 200 to 250 volts AC which connect up, if I show you, on these three end here for live neutral earth. There is a transformer, which the 2500 model does not have. And because, obviously, it comes as an AC current um, from the mains, yes, this transformer will reduce the voltage down. The circuit board on the chloride jet wobbler also has a bridge rectifier built into it which the Gent 2500 obviously doesn't have because it only runs off DC so again that sort of starts to explain why there's a lot more in this chloride Gent Wobbler than there is in the Gent Wobbler also worth noting as well there is a green internal flying lead in the chloride Gent one which actually screws onto the grey metal box to act as an earth lead which again this one does not have what the uh, chloride gent wobbler could also do that the gent 2500 cannot do i don't know if you can quite see in here there is a little black component with a red band on it which is one variable resistor and a second one just in there which is a second variable resistor resistor which will give us a differing differing um, pitch and speed of warble which again the 2500 will not do so um there's just a lot more options on the chloride gent wobbler it's a little bit more advanced um, still quite a basic printed circuit board, there's no sort of 
microchips that I can see. There's quite a few transistors. Interestingly, the transistor that's featured in the chloride jump one. I put that part number into uh, into an internet search the other day and found that this transistor is still produced to this day with the same part number some nearly 40 years later. Um, so if any of the components ever did fail, um, it seems that obtaining them would not be too much of a problem, which is exactly what we have had to do with the chloride jump wobbler. I connected it up to a DC power supply the other day that was the wrong way around and it blew the two diodes here which form part of the bridge rectifier, um, they've been replaced and it works perfectly again. So now, let's get these two and uh, have a go through the different sounds that they make. So, let's go for the all-important sound test. And as it's already in S, for which I believe is the uh, sweep mode, we'll uh, start that first. So move it along to the next option, which is Y. And then finally the intermittent. And then back to the beginning. And that's basically the 2500 covered off. Um, that's the three sound options that you get with it. So next is the turn of the Chloride Gent Warbler. The 515 model, if we're being specific. A little bit of history on both of these alarms. The 2500 actually did come in a job lot of stuff that actually had a previous life in a school. Um, not that I know where the school was or anything like that. This one that we're looking at now came from... Um, an RAF base in Lincolnshire, um, both via eBay, and, and I believe that this one is actually new old stock um, and never actually got installed anywhere at all, so really it's not really done anything with its life uh, apart from hanging my hallway for the last uh, 10 months or so. So what we'll do with this one is we'll try it with the warble tone which is what it's set to at the moment, and while it's on the warble tone We'll start playing with the variable resistors and we'll see exactly what they can do. So this one, obviously like the uh, 2500, has the three different sounds. And this is going to be a bit of a learning curve for me because I've only ever had it wired up for the warble tone you're going to hear. Um, so it'll be interesting to hear it make the different sounds because it's, it's never done them as far as I'm aware. Right. Here we go. So what I'll do is I'll play with one of the variable resistors first and I'll play with the other and hopefully you can hear the different sounds that it produces.
interesting. So that gives you an idea of the different varieties of uh, pitch and speed. And you know, I, we used to have these in my primary school, and every single sounder was ever so slightly different. Um, and I guess some left the factory that way, or you could tune them up if you really felt like it. So um, I'll just reconnect the wires, and we'll change it to a different uh, a different sound. We'll try something new out on it. So sound number two, this is the pulse, and according to the instructions there is an option to change over to warble if it was wired correctly. So let's go for the next sound. So we'll try the final sound, it'll just be interesting to see as well if the variable resistors still do their job uh, with this. So the answer is yes, the variable resistors still work, uh, even on the different sound settings. So there we have the side-by-side -side comparison of the chloride gent warbler and the gent 2500 warbler. I hope you found this slightly informative and hopefully a little bit entertaining as well. Thank you.